Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to look at the second stage of the tour of Algarve. We're going to look specifically at the last seven kilometers, which is into the final climb of Alto da Foya, which is a 7.4 kilometer climb at an average of 6%. As we join the race, we can see the UAE Team Emirates are working at the front. Jan Pollock working for his captain, Roy Costa. I don't exactly know why, because Roy Costa isn't one of the favorites. But nonetheless, UAE at the front. We can see the bunch is down to around 40%. And here is our first glimpse of Mathieu van der Poel, the three-time cyclocross world champion, riding for his newly branded team, Alpacine Phoenix. Anyways, we can see that everyone's struggling and it's being strung out as we speak and an Astana rider goes on an attack to try and soften up the race. And we can see Jan Pollock is actually doing a monster turn for his captain to bring back this Astana rider. And again, we get our second shot of Macho van der Poel. The cameraman seems to be very fond of Macho van der Poel. The Astana rider still has the gap, but Jan Pollock is still on the front. And if we speed it up, we can see that he just does a monster turn to get this Astana rider back in contention to the leading group. And moments later, a Phoenix Alpacine rider is dropped. But is it? Macho van der Poel? Is it really him? No, of course not. But the cameraman just wanted to check nonetheless. It is, in fact, his teammate, Otto Veregarden, who's dropped not Macho van der Poel. The Astana rider is still off the front and is eventually caught by Jan Pollock, who brings it back for the leading group. And he's still on the front. He's been going quite a number of kilometers. And we again met with another Macho van der Poel shot. And this is the shot that he was waiting for. Macho van der Poel, the three-time world cyclocross champion and Amstel gold winner, pulls off finally off the back with five kilometers to go to the front. Subsequently, Jan Pollock delivers the pain face of the year. And it looks very painful, but he has been working for a number of kilometers. And then finally, another team comes to the front. Astana choose to put the Harold Tijara, Colombian, at the front and gives a very good turn, but it's very short. And if we're counting it as we are, it's only, in fact, 14 seconds. 14 seconds, and then Jan Pollock returns to the front. Not much of a rest for the... <laughs> Slovenian rider. He checks at the back and finally Jan Pollock goes off the front and he quickly descends down the leading group. Ben Swift, a sprinter in my opinion, actually goes to the front, which is amazing that he's just here. And then moments later, Miguel Angel Lopez goes to the front and delivers a Superman acceleration. So you would expect that Ineos or a team with a big favorite would actually be chasing, but no, it's UAE Emirates and this time it's the leader, Rue Costa, who's chasing down the breakaway. And I don't really understand this because Rue Costa is the leader. Do UAE feel that they have Tajay Podachar in the group? They're riding as if Tajay Podachar is in the race, but the defending champion is actually not here. We can see that Vincenzo Nibali is part of this group. Miguel Engel Lopez, Dan Martin, and Remco Evenepoel is also here, looking very cool and collective, which would be very worrying if you were one of his competitors. Simon Geschke, the best bear of the peloton, goes on a very fruitful attack. And back of the group, we can actually see his teammate, Greg Van Avermaet. Yes, Greg Van Avermaet, the... Paru Bay winner and Olympic champion is still in this group, which is incredible with only two kilometers to go before the top. Geschke is caught just after the Flamme Rouge, and which is really sad because he's only got one kilometer to the top. But Dakota Quickstep have really been putting in a savage effort to get him back. Quickstep take control of the pack and Almindia really puts a savage turn in for his team leader, Remco Evenepoel. And this drops former champion Mikhail Kiotowski of Team Ineos, a former champion of the race. Dan Martin looks in fine form behind the Dakota Quickstep rider, and the pace is really high, but Dan Martin actually does look really comfortable, and he has actually won up this stage before in the past. Coming towards the finish, we can see that all the big names are getting anxious to go on an attack, and Rui Costa is still here despite the heavy attack that he put in. And then suddenly out of nowhere, Remco Evenepoel puts in a savage thrust of power and launches himself off the front. And he puts in a massive gap, considering this is a group of punches, that's really impressive from the young Belgian. And it's really impressive by the young Belgian how much distance he actually gets on them before they even try to claw back. 
Maxim Miliam Schachmann is the rider, the German champion who gets closest to Remco before the finish and he nearly pips Remco at the finish line, but Remco manages to take the victory. So what's really impressive is not only that Greg Van Avermaet finished 15th on the stage, or that his domestique Juan Almendia actually managed to finish just 17 seconds after him, but also the fact that he was finishing more than 30 seconds ahead of Geraint Thomas. So that really puts it in perspective what kind of riders he's beating and what kind of form he's in. But we can't show you his power data, obviously. So I'll do the second best thing, getting Leonard Kahneman power data file as he's the new KOM holder of the climb, surpassing Thibaut Pimino, who had it from 2016, I think, and improving the time by more than a minute. So if we go in on the segment, we can see that Leonard Kahneman is now the KOM holder and he averaged a power of 375 watts for the 16 minute and 46 second effort. So if we look at his power data, we can see that his maximum wattage was 612 watts and his average, as we said before, was 375. And the time that Remco attacked was around here. So his watts shoots up from around 400 watts that they're sustaining up until the attack up to shoots up to 591. And then we can see that he can't hold the pace and it goes down to 221 for a moment and then he settles out at a 400 and just at the final few dips, he manages to get it up again. But yeah, that kind of just puts in perspective how hard Remco was actually going, that he was going more than 600 watts at the top of the climb really shows that what a class rider he actually is and maybe he could even be a future Tour de France winner. Time will tell. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. We really hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.